Hello everyone, I'm working on a top-down car combat game with the ultimate goal of turning it into a sandbox, much like you would see in a space game like Elite or Freelancer, just with cars. In it, you will drive to outposts, buy and sell goods, pick up bounties and other missions, buy and upgrade cars, and so on. But the plan is to get the driving and combat down first, maybe release a smaller level-based arcade game and then build off of that. So, to begin with, I watched and followed this tutorial by Kids Can Code, They've got some great stuff, don't let the fact that the name implies it's for kids put you off. I won't go into too much detail on this part, you can just watch the tutorial if you want to build your own top-down car steering game yourself. So at this point I had a car that can be driven around, and I picked a random image off the net and drove around it, fiddling with the numbers until I liked how it felt. I did add some minor modifications like adding drifting, but otherwise the driving code is very much based on that tutorial. The next step was to take out all the player control code and place that in a separate script. So I made sure to have an acceleration and steering function so they can be called externally by the control scripts to drive the car. The idea here being that I can place a player control script as a child to make it the player car. But I could also place an AI brain script instead so it could become an enemy or NPC, without having to touch the car driving script itself. Once this was completed, I had to actually test this out by making an AI script. At first it was very simple, just accelerating at all times and using the dot command to determine what direction to steer to chase the player. It was pretty basic, but instantly looked pretty good, because even though the AI couldn't think any further beyond which direction to steer, it was still forced to drive the car to get to the player, so its movement looked very natural. I wanted to add some more advanced AI behaviors, but first I needed to code the weapon system so I can give the AI the concept of shooting. As mentioned earlier, the game is inspired by space sandbox games, and I, I don't know if it's common language or just something I heard in one of the games, but maybe it was Elite Dangerous? But don't quote me on that. Each ship has weapon hardpoints, which is where you equipped the front-mounted guns or turrets or anything really. So I created a hardpoint object that can be placed on a car, which determines what weapon types can be equipped here, such as rifles, which is what I'm calling the front-mounted guns, uh, turrets or traps. The actual guns, for now, are all hitscan based, very similar to the code that's in Return to Sender, and I will eventually add projectiles, but this was the bare minimum I needed so I could return back to the AI. Now I had what I needed for some more interesting AI behaviors. I took the steer into the player code and moved it into a chase state, also having a check to see if they are more or less facing the player so they can start shooting their front mounted guns. I added the ability to pull up alongside the player by offsetting where they're aiming their steering, which will allow for enemies to box the player in, and more importantly, for those with turrets to pull up within turret range and attack the player that way. I also added an escape state that just steered in the opposite direction of the player, essentially using the same dot code but multiplying it by negative one. I should point out, at this point, the AI states worked but couldn't be changed, so I could test it manually by setting the state before running. The reason for this was that I wanted to have a separate Master AI Manager script handle all the state changes. I'll get into that in a bit. I made a start on the AI Manager, but all it could do at this point was track the existing AI cars and the player, and assign the player as the target for all enemies. Before I could continue working on the Master AI Manager, I needed two things. I needed there to be a distinction between an active car and a dead one, so I coded a very simple health and damage system, having cars explode when they are out of health. They would also emit a signal to alert the AI manager that they've died, so they can be removed from all considerations. Oh yeah, I also needed to stop enemies from crashing into each other all the time and ramming into the player, although I might want a ramming behavior later on when I code some sort of damage on crash, but for now I want them to avoid it, so... I added a few short-range raycasts to the front of AI cars, and when triggered, it will cause the AI to steer away. They sometimes still blindside each other when steering into one another, but it's chaotic battlefield, I don't mind it happening occasionally. I also needed the turrets, and for a way for a car to report what weapon types it had, so the AI manager will know to assign cars with rifles to the chase state, for example, and cars with turrets to the alongside state. I quickly drew up a terrible looking turret and placed a new hardpoint on the player car. Turrets were going to have to behave very differently to the rifles, so I decided to give them a shared parent script called Weapon, and then have the code unique to each weapon type in new scripts. So what was once Gun is now Weapon, Rifle, and Turret. And eventually will also be Trap or Mine Layer or something like that. My first goal was to have the turret face a target, but this means the player needs to be able to pick a target, so oops, looks like I'm coding a targeting system first. 
The Master AI Manager already had a list of all the enemies, so the player control script would request this list and iterate through the list every time the next target or previous target actions were pressed. I'll eventually add a target nearest or target in front of me button because scrolling through every existing enemy including the ones miles away from the player isn't very feasible, but it's good enough to prove it works anyway. Every time the player changed target, this was fed down to all the turret weapons so they could share the target. Now, the turrets had their targets, they needed to use the dot command to figure out if they had to turn left or right to face their targets. I added a turn speed variable so this can be customized to have, say, a really powerful cannon with slow turn speed that's easily avoided but devastating once it locks on, or a fast turning, weaker turret that just chips away at its target. I added a maximum range variable so once the turret was aimed at its target and within range it could just start firing. Only thing I needed to do to make this work on AI enemies was make them feed their target down to the turrets too, which at least at this point was always going to be the player anyway. But as far as I can tell, I haven't hard coded the player as their target in any of the AI scripts. The Master AI Manager can set them to attack some objective the player needs to protect or AI allies the player might have later down the line. The Master AI Manager is what brings all these parts together to create an actually engaging battle. The inspiration for it was twofold. Left 4 Dead's director is a minor inspiration. Not in how it actually works specifically, but just the idea that there's something keeping track of everything and making decisions behind the scenes to ensure a better player experience. The other is brawlers. Games like Batman Arkham Asylum or Mad Max, where you would face off against many enemies, but ultimately only a couple would ever attack you at once. Which in itself was inspired by many kung fu movies, where most of the bad guys would circle the hero and look intimidating. So I added some variables that can be modified on an encounter by encounter basis to affect the intensity of any given battle. These are the number of chasers, the number of alongsiders, how long the chasers go for and how long a break to give the player before the next chasers are assigned, and the same again for the alongsiders. When assigning chasers, the script will start out by looking for any AI cars with front facing guns but no turrets, and place them into a list of potential chasers. It will then check if there are enough cars in the potential chasers list to match the number of chasers. If not, it will do the same again, but for cars with rifles and turrets. After this stage, it will loop as many times as a number of chasers and pick randomly from the potential chaser list. I didn't bother uh, with removing them from the potential chaser list after selecting them. If the same car gets selected multiple times, it just means there will be less chasers this time around, and you know, it's just variety, isn't it? Also, with all this talk of chasers and potential chasers, I just... I imagine any trans viewers have been cringing pretty hard, so <laughs> I'm kind of... I'm really sorry about that. But anyway, once the chasers are selected, it's going to do the same for alongsiders, prioritizing those with turrets and no rifles, then checking for turrets and rifles, but then also checking for cars with no turrets at all, because they might still be useful to box in their target. For both chasers and alongsiders, once selected, a random float is generated up to the max chase or max alongsider time, and counted down. Once the timer hits zero, it will tell the cars assigned to that role to pull away and just stalk the player. A grace timer is started, at which no new cars are assigned the role, but once the grace period is over, they are assigned again. This is meant to give the player a bit of a breather and not feel like they are constantly under fire, making the fights feel a bit more dynamic. The random times assigned to both the chase and grace periods should hopefully make it feel less obvious that that's what's happening and give the illusion of enemies attacking semi at random but with some semblance of teamwork. And with all that in place, I tossed in about 10 AI cars with various weapon configurations and hit play. And you know what? It works. And I dare say it's pretty fun too. I still need to create the new shot types like projectiles and rockets as well as mines and other traps. But the AI was my main focus here, and I'm really excited to see it in action. Once I've added the new shot types, I'll look into adding a faction system and improving the master AI manager to account for targets that are not the player. I'll also need a mission manager that will cause the game to end when the player dies, and a victory when all the enemies die, which will then be expanded to have other win or lose conditions, such as having a defense target that the enemy AI will occasionally target and fail the player if it gets destroyed. The possibilities are endless. Once I have all these in place, I'll make up a few scenarios, put them together for a free game, but these scenarios will more or less mirror the types of missions that will be generated in the open world sandbox game. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. By the way, before you go, my main project is a commercial game on Steam called Return to Sender. 
It is a competitive horde mode retro FPS with a Tetris-like mechanic where each enemy you kill gets sent to the other player. If that sounds interesting to you or you would just like to support me, please check the description below for a link and wishlist the game. It's not available yet, but every wishlist helps. Bye!